Good evening. Thank you all for coming. It's uh, as always. It is our great joy to welcome you, Your Eminence, to the um, to, to your here. parish. I wish I serve only as your representative. Oh. And it's a joy to have you all here. Um, it's been uh, kind of a weird year. It's nice to have this aspect of normality, if that's uh, something I can say. So briefly then, as His Eminence has told me, I need to be brief. In our uh, men's group this year, the men we, um, we've been uh, going over Genesis. And one of the things we were talking about this last week was this uh, incredible moment in the very beginning of the book, in the very moment of, in the, right after creation, when you have, it's even before the creation of Eve, you have this moment between God and Adam and creation where God has made everything that is. But he calls Adam, he calls man over, and he tells him to name them. And the, uh, the course we're using for, this, uh, for this, uh, this group makes the point that the most amazing part about this is not just that God asks man to help him in this act of creation by giving the animals their names, it's that God abides by man's decision. It's not so, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I ask my kids to help, I ask them to help, but not necessarily to help. I'm teaching them. So it's, you might think, oh, well, God already had named the giraffe, for example, the giraffe, and then Adam came out and called it the thingamabob. And God said, well, that's nice, Adam. <laughs> you can call it the thingamabob. It's really a giraffe. He doesn't do that. He abides by the name. Whatever the name is that Adam gives these animals, God abides by it. And one in the group made the point that it's not like, you know, there's a link to this creation, there's a limit to this cooperation because it's not like God has man make the animals. Adam isn't sculpting animals out of clay and then God breathes life into them. God does the work, but this act of naming, this act of ownership and stewardship and care is carried out by not just, a, oh well, we'll let him do something, but it is an act of cooperation and co-creation with God. And we were talking about this because this is, everything we talk about in Genesis, this isn't just a one-off thing. Everything that we read in Genesis is relived every day for each of us. This narrative of Adam and Eve and God and creation and the fall, we do this on a daily basis. This relationship with God that stands or falls, thrives, or disintegrates. But we also have this same relationship with God still, that we are called to be co-creators with Him. And we even continue this naming, if you think about it. I know one of the difficult things about having children, something I never really thought about before I had children, but it's, it's a hard thing to name a child. You have to come up with a name, and that's the child's name. For all of their life, this is how they will be known, this is how they will be called, this is who they are. That is an incredible responsibility. But this combination of God working for us and through us and inviting us to and to work with Him, this is what humanity is, this is what the human experience is. And I talk about this tonight because I don't know if you see this any more clearly than in the life of a saint like Saint Demetrios. Because everything that he does, all of these things that he accomplished, what we read about in his life tonight, the spreading of the gospel, it's not like Saint Demetrios came and saved all the people that believed in Christ. They weren't believing in Saint Demetrios. They were believing in the God on whom he called. Nestor wasn't able to defeat Lias in the arena because St. Demetrios gave him the power. What, you think about what Nestor says in the arena. He doesn't say, St. Demetrios, help me. He says, God of St. Demetrios, help me. God is the one who accomplishes all these amazing things. And not just during St. Demetrios' life, but even after his death. The reason his relics are incorrupt, the reason that myrrh pours forth from his relics is because God is there. 
But at the same time, does God need Demetrius to make myrrh? Does God need Demetrius to help Nestor conquer Lies in the stadium? Does God need Demetrius to reach out to all those people in Thessaloniki? He does not. He doesn't have to work through us, but he asks us to work alongside him. He asks St. Demetrius to work alongside him, and not just in life, but even after he was killed, he continues to show forth his power, his grace, and his presence, and the reality of God with us, even through his relics. So as we celebrate this feast, as we think about creation, as we think about moment where God has Adam name the animals. And we think about this not only in terms of, oh, that was nice for St. Demetrius, or that was nice for Adam. This isn't just a one-off. This is our life. This is our reality. We are also called to be co-creators with God, not our own gods, not the source of our own strength, not the source of our own miracles, but to shine so with the light of Christ that all are drawn to him, not to us. To co-create, to be co-workers with God for his glory and the fulfillment of the kingdom. May the prayers of St. Demetrius guide us to be another Thessaloniki, to be another body of Christ where the light of Christ shines in the world. Thank you again, Your Eminence, for the privilege of serving in the Lord's vineyard under you. It is indeed the greatest privilege, one of the greatest privileges, I should, privileges, I should say, of my life. Say, so my wife and my children are right here.